Good morning, everybody. It's Lynn, the Leather Bag Lady. I hope you're all having an awesome day. It's a cold one. I've got my uh, chilly sweater on, my stars. I think this is actually pajamas, but I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. It's not really my color, but since I've uh, turned into a blonde, I seem to be able to get uh, colors to work that I haven't had to work before. Um, it's cold, leather bag lady weather report. It's uh, chilly, but the sky is blue and it's not snowing. Uh, I've got to take a drive to St. Catharines today to pick up a purse. Um, under normal circumstances, that would be a day-long activity. I'd probably drop in and visit my sister on the way. I'd go and visit my daughter once I got there, maybe go see Jules maybe drop in on Carrie at work, but can't do any of those things, so I'll just go. St. Catharines is about 40 minutes away, 45 minutes away. It's a nice little drive. My little buggy hasn't been out um, for a little while. Once the snow flies, uh, my little car won't uh, navigate the snow very well. It's too low to the ground, so it'll be, uh, I'll have to brush the snow off at first. But the roads are good, so I'll, uh, I'll go for a little bit of a drive. And I found a little bit of a hack. Um, I mentioned to you that my new phone no longer has the uh, auxiliary outlet for headphones. I guess you're supposed to use those wireless ones. Well, I don't want to use the wireless ones. And I have an auxiliary cord in my car for my stereo to hook up to my Spotify. So now all of a sudden that's not happening. So it seems that if I if I put my Spotify on in the car whilst I'm still attached to my Wi-Fi, as long as I don't turn the car off, it maintains. I don't know why or if that's weird or if that's just how it goes. But if I'm just going to pick up a bag, I'll just leave the car running because it's all porch pickup. I'll grab the bag and head home. And hopefully, um, I don't think I've ever gone that far. So we'll see. Hopefully it'll, it'll uh, stay attached or connected or whatever. Because part of the joy of driving my little car is uh, listening to my music. And I've shared with you already, I think I've blown a speaker, but... <laughs> Anyway, it is what it is. So, uh, Tuesday morning this morning, and um, yeah, just getting uh, getting a mixture of some not quite so vintage bags, but also uh, taking care of the bags that I have already had listed for some time and haven't actually gotten on video. So that's what we're doing today, kind of a, a mixture of all three. So, first bag today. Um, I showed it to you briefly uh, the other day. Is this absolutely beautiful? I mean, the leather is so soft. It's really, really, really soft. It's beautiful. And then this cowhide accent is just gorgeous this little front pocket opens up what have i got in there oh i was taking some pictures the other day of it so that's a nice uh, little pocket um there is some tarnishing on these grommets on this side i'm not sure why as opposed to this side i don't know why um, it is just a shoulder bag. There is a little bit of room for uh, movement. Inside, it has, um, again, dating itself. It has a very small foam pocket. So we're looking at a 90s bag. Um, the brand is Maybeck International. It's a Colombian-based uh, company. And it's just... Just a sharp, simple little bag. You know, there's a zipper here. 
um, there's the label, Columbia, and then a couple of little slip pockets on this side. Is it two or just one? Yeah, just one. But I mean, it's so, it's so small. There's no, I mean, that's one of those, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, tiny little flip phones. And the base is uh, nice wide gusset, though. You're going to get a lot of stuff in here, actually. You'd be surprised at how, how uh, big this will stretch to. So that's bag number one. Now, bag number two is an 80s harder shell. Um, Berkeley, I've come across this brand a few times. I don't know too much about it. It's kind of a smooth leather. It's in really good condition. The only thing there is an issue with is whatever card they've used on the base has disintegrated. So it's not loose. It, it is loose, but it's not something you can go in and take out because it's stitched in there. So um, we took that 1980s bag apart, the Dua Fratelli bag, and uh, we saw all the disintegrated cardboard and stuff. So that's what's happened here, but it's still solid enough that it's, and it's got this little ridge around. So once you've got um, items in there, you'll be able to uh, stand that up, no problem. Yeah, so that's, that's the issue there. There is a, a front pocket. Interior is, um, there's the Berkeley, and you can see that, the little tag saying it's leather, the uh, zippered pocket, no phone pouches obviously, this is an 80s, an 80s bag, nice uh, kind of hard shell, gold tone hardware, some of the gold tone has come off of this little guy, but other than that, um, it's fine, this, there is some uh, extra holes and you could definitely add holes but the straps are fairly decent uh, fairly decent length certainly eh, I would probably put an extra hole in I like it a just a just a little bit longer but again you know I'm not a tiny lady so um, if if you're a little bit more petite then you know maybe you wouldn't have to do that no cracking or any damage or anything. Um, sometimes that's where things start to disintegrate is in the corners here, but there's nothing. This is perfect. Like I said, just that little bit of uh, area of distress at the bottom. So that is bag number two. Now, bag number three, this was in my own collection and I just love, I really like Donna Karen's stuff. I really like, and I like the signature uh, monogrammed. Um, this is 90s when, you know, Louis Vuitton was very, um, you know, kind of in its height. Two slip pockets here, one there. Does it go all the way to the bottom? No, it goes to about here. And this one goes all the way to the bottom. But, uh, you know, some nice pockets, nothing on the back, but it has this really kind of unique strap system. It has, um, where is it? Where is it? DK, oh, there it is. So there's um, DKNY is just, you know, little details like that, just... You know highlight the quality really nice long strap so that very comfortable to wear um, you've got your leather gusset and up the sides this is all leather leather trim and then uh, there is a leather zipper pull inside your DKNY 
no uh, pouches for phones. Again, you know, we're probably, I'm going to say late 80s, early 90s here. And uh, just the nice, nice patina on the leather. I really like this. This is a really nice one. As I said, it, it was one of my own bags, but just not a crossbody fan. Uh, Donna Karen actually was the head designer at um, Anne Klein when she was actually 26 years old. That's how uh, much she stood out as a, a young designer. And she launched her own brand in 1988 in New York. So she's been around, very kind of Liz Claiborne-esque, and I, I really like her stuff as well. Um, just, yeah, I really, I don't know what it is. I guess maybe I'm a little bit of a logo hound, but I don't know, I just like it. Nice quality, really, really nice quality. So that's our three bags for today. Um, there was something I wanted to mention to you yesterday, but I forgot. And I forgot again today. What a donut. Uh, oh, well. Oh, well. No big deal. No big deal. So we're getting, uh, we're getting really to the end of, uh, my, the bags that I've already listed and I haven't yet, uh, done videos for. So those are almost, um, finished and then going through the, uh, bags that I just presumed weren't vintage and how the, my process for that, um, and again, this is just a hobby for me. I'm not, um, Obviously, I don't have bills of sale. I don't have anything that can, you know, unequivocally state what year the bag was made. I mean, my research process is I find out if the company was around 20 years ago, and then I do a Google image search of what their, um, what their line was, you know, 1980s, 1990s, and I try and match the bag with uh, the styles they were producing at that time. Now, a lot of the 80s bags I used to own, so I know fairly confidently. It's that kind of end of the 80s, end of the 90s, um, and I say that because I didn't live in Canada in most of the 90s. I lived in the UK and I really wasn't, with the exception of my Louis Vuitton, which is where I got my Louis Vuittons, um, I wasn't really interested in any other bag brands. Um, and then I came uh, back to Canada in 98, end of the year 98, and then slowly started uh, to educate myself just because I was looking for a replacement for the brands that I, I knew. I went to the UK in 91. So I used to, you know, buy Aldo when Aldo was a leather brand. Uh, Calderon when Calderon was still um, available. And those were my kind of go-to stores. So it wasn't necessarily a brand per se as a store, as a retailer that I trusted and whatever the brand, like the trend. I didn't go to Calderon and save up my money for a whole summer to buy the trend. I just wanted the boots and the bag that I liked from Calderon. I knew Calderon was a quality retailer and whatever the brand was is whatever the brand was. And even in the early 2000s, uh, when I first came back to Canada, um, oh, I know what it was I wanted. And it, it's this I wanted to talk about. I bought a Matt and Nat bag. Now, I follow Miss Philly. I watch Miss Philly every day. And her style and my style, I mean, there's probably a good 20-year maybe not 20 year, I maybe 10 to 15 year age difference between the two of us. And obviously our tastes are a little different and she's a little bit more into the brands than I am. I mean, I'll take a bag because of its quality um, over its branding. And if it has both, fantastic. 
but she is very um, interested in picking up these mat and nap bags. And I remember I bought one. Now, it was in Oakville at a boutique. So, it, you know, Oakville, I mean, you want to go buy uh, orange juice in Oakville, you're going to pay a dollar more for it in Oakville than you would do here in Hamilton. That's just the way the economy works. I mean, Oakville is, is quite a a wealthy uh, town, city, whatever you want to call it now. Um, I was raised there, but, you know, not, we're, we're not a bougie family in any way, but my parents do still have their house there, and on occasion, I will go to the grocery store and grab a bunch of stuff, and it's like, are you kidding me? You know, this orange, you know, this orange juice, just because that's one I remember, is, um, you know, a dollar, two dollars cheaper in Hamilton. So, um, the bags are, um, can't even remember what I was going to say now. <clears throat> That's what happens to me because I go off on a freaking tangent. Um, what was I talking about? Things being more expensive. Oh, Matinat. So, yes, I bought this Matinat at a boutique in Bronte in Oakville and I paid over a hundred dollars for it and it just I liked it and initially I thought it was leather and then I kind of thought oh it's no big deal and I couldn't get over the fact that it wasn't leather so I ended up taking it back but what I wanted to to just kind of highlight is the amount of bags that Miss Philly finds and they're so damaged and to hear her commentary is that it's very rare to find one that isn't. And they're expensive. Like, why would you... I don't know. I guess that's just my thrift soul. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a real thrifter. I would not in any planetary realm go and pay over $100 for a plastic purse that I may get a year or two's wear out of when, you know, you can go even, I watch Dion Dean, I watch uh, Lavender Clothesline, um, Nicole State, and they're all going to the bins and finding beautiful leather pieces that are third. Well, look at the, the 80s bag I just showed you, leather. And it's okay, yes, the, in, the interior is starting to, to disintegrate, but the leather itself is perfect. So is it really the eco-friendly answer is kind of what I'm, you know, getting on my soapbox a little bit about. That PU leather, polyurethane leather, plastic leather, vegan leather, it's just a bougie way to say it's a plastic bag that you can charge $125 for what is the eco-friendliness of that? You buy a leather bag, the presumption is, and again, I don't know, but the cow or the animal has been utilized in many different ways. Food, um, you know, the, the skin for purses or like it's been completely used and that leather will a last forever if you look after it but if it does happen to find itself in a landfill it's going to disintegrate it will eventually decompose and go back into the earth matinat nope it is going to be there forever absolutely there forever and I just got a notification that I've had a sold a bag on Shopify. My Shopify store? Wow, that's a first. I have not sold a bag on Shopify at all and wasn't even really thinking about it. <laughs> oh, well, there we go. Yay, first Shopify sale. I'll have to check that out. Hopefully it's going to be okay. Um, anyway, so that's just my rant about... Um, you know, these uh, vegan leather options. I get it. Nobody wants animals to suffer or whatever. But you know what? That stuff is, you know, 
if it was good quality and you could still use it in 30 years, okay. But for it to damage so quickly, which means it's going to end up in the garbage way quicker than any of my leather bags, and then it doesn't decompose and it's going to be there till kingdom come, I don't know. We need to really reassess the nonsense that we're telling ourselves and what we're believing to be true. Anyway, that's just my rant. Um, no expert here, just uh, somebody who loves leather bags and likes to, uh, you know, show them off and uh, has an opinion on most things. And uh, this is a great way for me to share it and whatever, whatever. So have a wonderful day and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Bye now.